Hello everyone, welcome to your Coach's Corner. I am your host, Coach David Lubin. You know, there comes along a story, a video, every once in a, a great while, that just touches your heart, brings you to a point of inspiration. On today's episode, we're going to be examining a video about a little girl who shared her lunch money, which inspired a generation. Take a look now, and I will see you at the end of the show. Somewhere in a small school in America, it was the fourth week of an email pen pal exchange program. It had been a week since Melissa Miller's pen pal Naya had stopped writing. As she began checking her email, Melissa worried that she'd never hear from her new friend again after hearing news reports of a military uprising in Naya's country. Where are you, Naya? Uh, finally. Dear Melissa, I am so scared. We have no food for two days. Bad soldiers are only 30 kilometers away. My school is closing and we will go far away to the home of my uncle tonight. His address is below. Please pray for me and my family. Thank you for being my friend. Your friend, Naya. Oh, Naya. Please be safe. Please don't die. Melissa didn't hear a thing her teacher said that morning as she worried about Naya. Naya was so far away and there was no way to help her. But as the lunch bell rang, Melissa got an idea. Maybe there was something she could do. Every day at lunchtime, Melissa went to the playground without eating lunch. She secretly saved her lunch money and envisioned sneaking to the store to buy her friend food to mail her. But after four days, Melissa realized she was just a kid. Going alone to the store and post office wasn't even allowed. Worse yet, if she told her mother she'd been skipping lunch, she'd be in trouble. That week, Mrs. Miller noticed her daughter had been a little distant. But now something was clearly troubling her. What's wrong, Melissa? You've been moping for days. I think Naya's going to die. Why? What happened? She hasn't eaten for days, and soldiers are probably destroying her village by now. We've got to send her food, Mom. Oh, honey, there must be food for her somewhere nearby. Don't worry, she'll be okay. No, you don't understand. When the soldiers came before, they killed her father and brother. Now they're killing more people. Why are they doing this, Mom? Melissa's mother felt so powerless. She knew in her heart that no matter what they did, it really wouldn't make much difference. How she ached to relieve Melissa's anguish and give her a more beautiful and peaceful world. Mom, I saved all my lunch money this week so we could go buy food for Naya. Oh, Melissa, you're the best friend anyone could ever hope for. After dinner, Melissa's mom took her to the market, and when they returned, they made a package for Naya and her family. And so... One lonely voice of concern disbelievingly became two. After mailing the package, Mrs. Miller worried about her daughter and called her teacher. Miss Narita, Melissa is heartbroken over Naya. I'm very worried about her. Can you assign her a new pen pal? Mrs. Miller, I'm so sorry. I had no idea all this would happen. I'll speak to Melissa this morning about a new pen pal. When Miss Narita tried to assign Melissa a new pen pal, however, Melissa argued passionately. Melissa, your mom didn't want you to worry. We thought you'd be happier with a new pen pal. Naya's my friend! We can't just forget about her! Why can't we help her? Sometimes, it's the children who teach the teachers. And so it was that morning that Miss Narita saw the world through the wisdom of a child's eyes. Melissa, you're right. Why don't you meet me outside the teacher's lounge after lunch today? And so, two became three. There was a sudden hush followed by admonishing looks when Miss Narita brought a child into the restricted teacher's lounge. But Miss Narita had a plan, and she faced them squarely. Once in a great while, I find a student who touches upon a higher kind of learning. Today, Melissa asked me why we shouldn't help a friend who desperately needs it. You see, unwittingly, I turned my back on her pen pal Naya. Thankfully, Melissa was there to remind me why I chose to become a teacher. And I'd like to tell you about Naya. As Miss Narita went on to describe Naya's situation, Earlier expressions of admonishment quietly softened, melting into tears and finally into resolve. Just as Melissa had awakened Miss Narita, now Miss Narita awakened all those present. Indeed, there was something they could do. And within a few minutes, the teachers had pooled together $557, and Principal Johnson got an idea. Melissa, I am so impressed that you had the courage to stand by your friend, even when the adults were telling you to turn your back. You know, 
Sometimes adults make mistakes, and they even lose hope that they have the power to fix things. They think many of the problems in the world are just too big to do anything about, and they give up. I want you to spend the rest of the day helping me plan a special assembly so that the whole school can help Naya's family and maybe even their friends. So now, three became fifteen. Many things are not right in the world. It takes special people to see that and then fix them. When we see people in trouble, we should help. Principal Johnson always had a way of reaching students, and this time was no different. By the time he finished, the students were completely silent. Then the silence exploded into applause, and the students started chanting, "Go, Melissa! Go, Melissa!" And so, fifteen became three hundred and ninety-seven. The school and community adopted Naya's family and sent weekly care packages with enough food to help several more families. After several months without any word from Naya's family, the school received a letter. Dear Melissa and everyone at your school, my home was destroyed and we have lost almost everything. We are living at the home of my uncle. It used to be a farm until the war started. Everyone was shocked when the charity truck brought your first package. It was more food. Than we had seen in weeks. In the next package, your teacher wrote and told us what you did at school and using your lunch money. Even Uncle had tears when I read the letter to him. I heard him tell Mother that Naya's little friend saved our lives. One day, Uncle was talking to his neighbor, who also has land that used to be a farm. There were many people walking on the road that day when the charity truck driver came with your package. And I heard Uncle ask him where these people are going. The men told him there was not enough water or food at the refugee camp, and they were told to look for somewhere else to stay. Then I realized there was something we could do. People could stay on this land because we have a river with clean water and empty barns where people could sleep. Then I say the people could help with the farm, and we could grow crops again. My uncle started smiling. And I saw a look of hope in his eyes. Today, we have 240 people living with us, and seven more neighbors have refugees on their land too. Altogether, there are about 2,000 people thanks to the kindness you started. Everyone is helping with the farm work, and we are all safe and have great hope. Everyone is calling this area Camp Melissa. Melissa, even with the food the refugee camp brings, no. Everyone is hungry. The harvest is many months away, and every night I hear so many children crying from hunger. I wish I knew what to do to help more people. Please pray for all of us. Your friend for life, Naya. As Melissa thought about Naya's letter, it dawned on her that if she and Naya could help two thousand people, then millions of people could change the whole world. And unlike many adults, she knew she wasn't powerless. There was something more she could do. Welcome back, everyone. Thank you for tuning in to today's session of your Coach's Corner. I am your host, Coach David Lubin. For more information about our show, go to our Facebook page now and like us: facebook.com Lubin Entertainment Group. Have a great day, and as always, God bless.